In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and the most merciful, I am Myra Sohail from Biomedical Department of University of Engineering and Technology, Texla. I am affiliated with the research group Syndicate of Embedded and Electronic Design. I am going to present my research titled Detection of Subacute Intestinal Obstruction from Surface Electromyography Signatures. Here are the contents I am going to present. Firstly, the motivation. Subacute intestinal obstruction is a gastrointestinal disorder and gastrointestinal disorders or diseases are among the major health issues faced in the tropical areas of the world. Such diseases not only lead to the physiological disturbances but also to the emotional and psychological disturbances as well. Bowel obstruction or the intestinal obstruction are reported worldwide and according to the recent statistics about 3.2 million cases are reported annually. Bowel obstruction resulted in about 264,000 deaths in 2015. Subacute intestinal obstruction is the partial or incomplete obstruction of intestine which is due to mechanical obstruction or failure in intestinal motility. About 75% cases of intestinal obstruction are due to peritoneal additions and other causes include hernia, malignancy, tumors and even gallstones. Subacute intestinal obstruction is one of the issues that lead to immediate medical consultation and this disease is the most common surgical disorder of small intestine. This disease is recurrent and the symptoms associated are ambiguous and non-specific which lead to delayed diagnosis in this case. But some of the typical symptoms associated include vomiting, abdominal distension, abdominal pain and constipation. The currently used diagnostic techniques include ultrasonography, computed tomography, the CT scan with or without contrast, laparoscopy and even MRI magnetic resonance imaging as confirmatory test. The diagnostic techniques employed are either harmful for the patient or they may lead to some kind of discomfort like laparoscopy which is a very beneficial technique but it includes incisions which is un uh, uncomfortable for the patient and painful as well. While the computer tomography which is the widely used technique for detection of subacute intestinal obstruction includes the use of x-rays which are high energy radiations and there is a chance of tissue damage due to the chemical bond breakage and the delayed diagnosis in this case is very dangerous as it may lead to the fetal conditions so there is a need of some accurate and proper method for the early detection of subacute intestinal obstruction and even such method should be painless and harmless as well so the technique which I opted is surface electromyography which is the measure of electrical and mechanical activity of the intestine which give information about the underlying intestinal muscles motility. In case of subacute intestinal obstruction, the intestines are under continuous air or fluid pressure. So it is a case of hyperperistalsis and the motility is disrupted and surface electromyography gives information about the disrupted motility of intestine in case of sub subacute intestinal obstruction. Then moving towards the literature review, I have reviewed the literature of the previous decade in which the science researchers used the conventional techniques of radiography mainly. And in 2013, a research was conducted in which the researchers evaluated the accuracy of the CT scan procedures for the detection of subacute intestinal obstruction and their method was found to be 83% accurate. In 2015, a research was conducted in which CECT performance was evaluated. CECT is the contrast in height and the results showed the technique to have 100% specificity with 31% sensitivity. In the same year, research was conducted in which the scientists evaluated the accuracy of abdominal auscultations for the bowel obstruction detection and this research proved that the pathological bowel sounds is not a very good method for the detection of disease because of certain limitations. The limitation is of time as the pathological bowel sounds are very less frequent and the recording time must be very large to get the useful information. In 2016, research was conducted in which the scientists evaluated the performance of MDCT which is the multi-detector computer tomography and the results showed that the technique has sensitivity of 53% with specificity of specificity of 83%. In 2017, a review research was conducted in which the researchers compared the various techniques for the detection of intestinal obstruction 
and they found the CECD contrast enhanced computer tomography to be the best and widely used method for the detection of intestinal obstruction with a sensitivity of 92% and the specificity of 93%. Machine learning and deep learning algorithms were also used for detection of intestinal obstruction and in 2018 the research was conducted in which the scientists evaluated the performance of machine learning algorithms and this found this method to be much more reliable than logistic regression algorithms. In 2018 another research works work was conducted in which the researchers evaluated the performance of convolution neural networks and they used the conventional radiographic images and their proposed methodology had the sensitivity of 83% with specificity of 68%. In 2019, a research was conducted in which the technique of surface electromyography was used, but this technique was used for the detection of other gastrointestinal diseases which were diarrhea and constipation. It was actually my own research work, my previous research work, and this current research work is actually a, the continuation and extension of my previous research work. And as in the previous research work, I used the surface electromyography technique for the detection of diarrhea and constipation. And in this research, it is about the early detection of subacute intestinal obstruction. So, what is the proposed methodology for the detection of subacute intestinal obstruction using surface electromyography? The first step is that position, which is followed by feature extraction and then the classification of results into the two categories of SIO, subacute intestinal obstruction, and normal. Data or signal acquisition. As surface EMG technique was the very first time used for the detection of subacute intestinal obstruction, so no such data was available on any research forum or internet platform. So data need to be acquired. For that, EMG sensor of beta Eno biomedical equipment kit was used with disposable surface electrodes, and electrodes are placed on the abdominal surface of the subject, and the placement of electrodes is shown in the figure. And the data was acquired at a sampling rate of 1 kHz and the sample duration was 10 minutes. Total of 50 samples were acquired of which 30 samples were from SIO category and 20 were from normal category. The time domain plots are indicated and as shown in the time domain plots, the normal SEMG is very much smooth as compared to the SIO SEMG which is much disrupted as in case of SIO or subacute intestinal obstruction, the motility is disrupted so the distortion is also indicated in the time domain plot. Then there is the feature extraction. For the accurate classification, three statistical features were found to be very best. And these are mean, which is the average value of the data points, skewness, which is a measure of distribution asymmetry of variable in data set, skewness, which is a measure of distribution peakness or sharpness. Then these three features were used for the classification, and for the classification, the SPM was used. SPM are the feed forward networks for the pattern classification. As I had a fewer number of samples, so I used support vector machine. As this binary learning machine gives high accuracy at a fewer number of samples, and it uses the kernel method. And the kernel which I used is quadratic kernel of SPM, which output a hyperplane classifying my data into SIO and normal categories. I used the quadratic kernel of SPM at 10 fold cross validation for training and testing. Then moving towards the results and discussions. For the feature extraction, I use the combination of various features. And the combination of mean, skewness, and kurtosis give the highest accuracy of 96% at quadratic SPM. And the stati statistical analysis of these three selected features also indicate that these are the best suited features for the classification of data into SIO and normal categories. The three selected features were also evaluated at different classifiers and at quadratic SVM the highest accuracy is achieved and the error rate is very low which is only 4% as compared to the other kernels of SVM and other classifiers and the sensitivity and the specificity using the quadratic SVM are 96.7% and 95% respectively. The confusion matrix is shown. And the accuracy achieved is 96% and the error rate is 4%. It is actually the mean accuracy which is obtained after 100 iterations. The class wise true positive and false negative rates are indicated for the normal and subacute intestinal obstruction classes at quadratic SVM at 10 fold cross validation. What I conclude is the proposed methodology is a novel methodology for the detection of subacute intestinal obstruction. 
It is very helpful in the early detection of subacute intestinal obstruction as in case of SIO or subacute intestinal obstruction, delayed diagnosis may lead to the fatal conditions. And this technique is totally non-invasive, totally painless and harmless as compared to the other diagnostic techniques which either involve incisions or radiations. And this technique may precede the other techniques for the pinpoint detection of subacute intestinal obstruction. So the people undiagnosed with subacute intestinal obstruction could be saved from the harmful effects of radiations or they may not face the discomforts of incisions and the pain. Such technique is a revolution in the medical industry as far as its computational complexity is also concerned. This technique can also be used for detection of other diseases of intestine which lies in the prospects of this research work. Here are some of the references which I have cited in my presentation. Thank you.